year. I'm LJ. What's cracking, y'all? This is Stevie Nicks. And we're Nick fans. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Nicks Anonymous. Anonymous. Myself, and I think we see Willis coming out. Fast break to Walt Frazier. Frazier then slows it down. It's picked up by Jerry West at the top of the post three. Yeah. We know differently. And here's David Stern for with the announcement. Pick, select Patrick Ewing. Bernard looking for 50, and he's got it. Back to back 50 point games for Bernard King. Anthony for three. Johnson cuts left, now fires a three, it is good, and he's fouled, it counts, and he is fouled. All right, drives down, and this time finishes with authority. Year, what it do in New York? Welcome back to another episode of... Nick Synonymous. Filthy of the filthiest. We're back, baby, with another episode. Episode 62. 63, actually. 63. Sorry. My mistake. Yes, 63. 63. Here we are. 63 episodes in. Who would have thought? Again. I wouldn't have thought. Not me. But Shout out to my meme community. But we're here. Claps. And of course, shout out to the Knicks Anonymous Familia. Yes, sir. Shout out to all of y'all. Shout out to everybody. We love you guys. We are the people's voice. And we are nothing without the people. Steven. And speaking of the people. How have you been, Steven? I've been doing good. You know, nobody slapped me, so I'm okay. Oh, no entanglements? Nope. At least none that I know of. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. Give it up for Will Smith. Yeah. Um, And this goes for you too, Will Smith. Douchebag of the year award. Follow us at Nick's Anonymous on Instagram. Will Smith. You too, Chris Rock. Chris Rock is a Nick fan, by the way. He be at the Nick games. Yeah, yeah. Follow us at Nick's Anonymous. Shout out to Chris Rock. Yes, sir. Follow us at Nick's Anonymous. You too, Chris Rock. On Instagram. You can find us on Amazon Music, Pandora, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Breaker, or you can simply Google us at Nick's Anonymous and you'll find us. Yes, sir. Hit that subscribe button harder. All right, that's on YouTube. Yes. Hit that subscribe harder. Now slap it harder. And Will Smith slaps. And we're still doing um past, present, and future. We haven't done an episode recently. But shout out, yes. Yeah, shout out to um shout Trip, to shout out to Trippy and Schmitty. Yes. By the way, um, we'll be doing another episode soon. Don't so just hold merch on, hold on always that. coming soon. Yeah. It's hard doing merch. I never thought. I never knew how hard that was. Merch always coming soon. Nah, you know what? We just gotta really put our minds to it. Put our noses down and just dig. Yeah. Cause that we do. That's what we do here as New Yorkers. You just gotta fight. You know what I mean? Like you just have that spirit. Shout out to my New Yorkers. If you're not a New Yorker, shout out to you too. It's all right. You just if miss- you're a Knicks fan, you're a New Yorker. Yeah, basically. I'm jacking it. Are you jacking it? I'm. Yeah. I'm with it. I'm, it. I'm with it, man. So interesting week of basketball, and you know, of course. Yeah, we went three and one this week to start that off, but. We actually have some breaking news that we got. We got some breaking news. Uh, I don't know if it's reliable, but apparently... Actually, it was big caps, and it said not reliable. But there is... But then I saw other sites saying it is reliable, so it's possible this is fake news. So don't take this as fact. But it does make sense. Yes. Apparently, and this is what you all wanted, well, most of you... Julius Randle will ask for a trade at the end of the year. Ooh. Again, apparently. This is a fact. But it it appeared on my phone. It appeared on LJ's phone. We saw more than one article about it. Was it was just going ham. So there are possibilities there that this may be the real deal. But then again, it might not be. But if it is, LJ, what do you think about this? Um... I think I w- it was about time. It was one of those things, like, it was only time. Like, we knew that was going to happen. I- at least I did, you know what I mean? If you didn't see that coming, like, we 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 knew, we called it, he would have finished the season. All right, right, right. We All did right. call it. We, we fin- did. He we finished did. the season. Um, but did we see uh, how how this would affect team? 
okay, Obi Toppin, besides the Hawks game, has been showing some type of, yeah, you, you know, consistency. He actually played decent against the Hawks. He just looked more shaky in that game than the other games for some reason. Like, I'm a, he, and we'll get into that when we talk about the games. No, yeah, I'm, but I'm going to keep it a buck with you, like, 100%. Like, I think the team would probably benefit more with getting rid of Randall than keeping him. I understand his numbers are like his if you look at his numbers he's averaging like 15 19 points you know what i mean and 10 rebounds so he's, he's a double double guy yeah he's he's it's, it's his average but sometimes numbers aren't everything and the man that could prove that more the most is uh our boy westbrook you know what i mean he's he's one of those guys that his numbers stat sheets filled up but there's Rand no results randall's our westbrook and i would have to agree with this to an extent his attitude isn't the greatest. Bro, lately. You know what I mean? Like, his, and I can understand he's frustrated. You know what I mean? I would be frustrated too, but you know what I mean? That This proves that he probably wasn't built for this kind of atmosphere. You know what I mean? Like, he let it slip through. Because think about it, bro. Everybody's been, Mel's been through this. Every, you know, Ewing's been through it. You said, Mel, you said, you said Ewing got cups thrown at him? No, um, on Patrick Ewing poster night, I believe it was his rookie season or his second season. Uh, this is my, what my father told me. Uh, on Patrick Ewing post tonight, Knicks lost. I guess they lost bad, and all the garden, everybody in the garden threw their posters on the court. So, you know I what mean, I mean? <laughs> it's, it's been worse. I'm not saying it's okay, but like, this, it just is what this culture is. We're, we're a dynamic fan base that just cares too much about our team. I can't lie though, man. Our fan base OD sometimes, and I don't like that. But uh but that's the reality. But if we're gonna that's be, that's what we are. But yes, that's what we are. But uh, logically, my fault. I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap it up. I don't go. Not that good. My fault. So like, in terms of the team, now we have to figure out what's gonna fill because he is he is gonna leave a gap on the spread on the point on in in the book. You know what I mean? Like he's in, we're gonna lose those ten rebounds. We're going to lose those 19, 15 points. You know, it's weird how he's averaging that. It doesn't look like it, but he is. It's just very sloppy and inefficient. You know what I mean? But regardless, we're going to lose that. And we have to figure out who is going to fill that gap. Now, Obi can fill the gap, but I don't think he's going to fill it that much. You know what I mean? I think he's going to have his games like this little run he's having. I think he's going to have because he's still young. He's still learning. Um, he is showing very good potential. He was doing a lot of new stuff. I saw him do a, I saw him do a pump fake, rip through off the dribble jump shot. Yeah, no, one dribble I, jump shot. I was shot. impressed by that. You know what I mean? He's doing, he's doing things that, you know, he's he's looking more he's like lear a, he's learning, he's like, developing like a fluid Randall. You know what I mean? So to wrap it up, honestly, I don't think we would lose that much by it. We would lose obviously because Randall is a double double guy. We will be losing that. But I think other guys, like Mitch, because Mitch is having a breakthrough year right now. Um, Sims is looking solid. You know what I mean? A lot of guys are stepping up. And to top it off, he doesn't have that thick skin that a lot of New Yorkers would appreciate that he has. You know what I mean? I would have to agree. I'm not going to lie. You know, if you're going to come here, you got to be ready. You got to be ready, man. I can't. There's no sugarcoating it. You got to be ready. And it's only based on your performance at the end of the day. If you want to be technical. True, but yes, we do. Od, well, not oh, uh, but okay, not every Knicks so, fan. Okay, you go ahead. Not Stevie. every Knicks fan. Ods, a you lot of us Stevie. do though. Go ahead, my guy. Like, I'm like sorry. the ones who want. No, it's okay. Like the ones who was talking about, they wanted to square up with him. It's not that serious, bro. Yeah, those people. Yeah, stop. Violence. Uh, come on. If we learned anything from this week, violence is not the answer. Yeah, they make Will Smith look good, <laughs> but you know what? Let's stop with the Will. Smith. Well, you're, you're gonna get more. Can we boo this man? Boo this man. Sure. I give a standing ovation to Chris Rock for taking that slap. He's slapping Dave Chappelle? Nah. Dave Chappelle probably would laugh that off, too. Well, Dave Chappelle would have probably weaved it. Like, oh. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but uh, back to Randall, though. I didn't um, even think about that. Back to Randall, though. Um, you know, I guess with me, I'm 50-50. Because I still, I'm still under the impression he's still a good piece. Because remember, like you said, he's a double-double guy. You know, not the smartest player in the NBA, but when he's on his game, he's a pretty decent playmaker. Can't deny that. 
That's where the four or five assist a game come in. But I won't say he's wore out his welcome. I'll say because, like, you know what? It's frustration. I don't think he has a – I can't say I don't think he has a bad attitude because lately that's not what he's showing. He's kind of showing a bad attitude. But I don't think he's that guy. I personally don't see him as that guy. He's not like a nuisance on the court or a problem in the locker room, nothing like that. At least as far as I know. He's just frustrated. But the thing about it is, like you said, things seem to be, even though things were a little shaky in Atlanta, things seem to be more fluid when he's not on the court. You know what I mean? The, the ball doesn't stop as much. He's not a black hole. Yeah, exactly. There's no, like, nobody, there's no ball stoppage at all when he's not there. The only ball stoppage you might get is RJ, and that's rightfully so because he's killing lately. But why RJ, wouldn't Why wouldn't the ball stop with him? RJ's a very, he's a smart, he's a smarter player than he is, than Randall. Facts. He makes all the right decisions. He might not have a lot of assists, but when he, when he drives and gets doubled, he knows where to kick it. Facts, I agree. But, like, with Randall, as far as I'm concerned... I'm trading him depending on what we're getting back. Because you hear a lot of Nick fans talk. Like, I understand they're jokes. And they say things like, oh, I trade him for a bag of chips and this, this, and that. Yeah, I get those are jokes, bro. But Randall, kind, whether, whether, whether y'all choose to believe it or not. What kind of chips? I mean, if I'm choosing chips, Ruffles. I'm a Ruffles guy. <laughs> but that's Ruffles? Just me. Yeah, I like I've it. had chips in a while. I'm thinking Doritos. No, I like Doritos. Doritos is my second choice. Cool Ranch. Wow. Mine too. Cool Ranch Doritos. I agree. Finger licking good indeed. Yes, My fault, bro. Go ahead. Not all good. Now you got to be thinking about Doritos. Yeah. Man. <laughs> um, Doritos. But he's a piece. Whether Nick fans choose to believe it or not, he's a valuable piece. He's not a guy you just trade. You have to get value back for that. You don't just trade him just to get rid of him because you're tired of his shit. Understand. You can be, you can be tired of his shit, but that's not going to lead management to make a dumb decision and that's what i like about this knicks management in all honesty they're not listening to the fans they're not as much as people criticize knicks management in the past you cannot deny jim dolan as we all think he's a bad owner he actually listens to the fans because when fans complain dolan does some at least at least um before leon rose now he's giving Leon Rose more control because he sees Leon Rose has control. Once Dolan comes in, then you know that's a bad sign. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is you don't just trade Randall. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying we're not we should. Also, you can't. You also got to look at the money he's worth. Exactly, and and a lot of y'all talk about his contract. His contract's not that bad of a contract. Y'all forget. 20 million. A lot of y'all forget. And it's probably for my generation because everybody's a little older. They're used to certain things. 20 million is not the max anymore, y'all. That's mid level now. So, like, Randall's contract is very movable. It's not impossible. We've said this many times. Yeah, we have y'all, very y'all hard, flexible. Y'all hard-headed. Very, I mean, that's, that's the New York, the hard hat, man. It's a hard hat summer. It's a hard hat summer, Stevie. I dig, man. But, yo, like, y'all can't. I understand people frustrated, but you can't run with narratives from the past, like bad narratives from the past because you're frustrated. You got to think a lot. Listen, at the end of the day, you have to think logical. No matter what you do, you have to always put some thought before you make a decision. You know what I mean? Before. True. true. It, it, everything. Everything. When, like when even even something as simple as crossing the street, you know, you got you to gotta make the decision to go or not. You know what I mean? Think logical. Do you always you always look both ways? You know what I mean? You're thinking logically, and if you don't look both ways, I advise you do because you're not thinking logically. <laughs> Just think logically, New York. You know what I mean? Just put the hard hat on. Actually, take the hard hat off. Loosen the tims a little bit. Take off that tin foil hat, y'all. Let the ankles. Sometimes it's let not the ankles that breathe. Serious. Let the ankles breathe. You know. I understand we're a passionate fan base, y'all, but y'all can't be running on passion averages, bro. There's people still who say Jim Dolan's um, the problem. He's not, bro. He's literally playing the background like we've wanted him to. He has yet to show in his face. I haven't seen Dolan. I haven't seen or heard Dolan in two years. Or heard. Two years? 
Two years. When's the last time you heard Dolan? I think probably that Spike Lee incident. And that was what? Two years ago? Yeah. Felt like last year. No, yeah, two years ago. Bro, like, like I said, Dolan's not the greatest owner, but you got to give him credit for stepping back. He hired the right guys. You know, so far they've been making maybe a couple mistakes. Like we still have, don't forget we still have Kemba on the roster. I give them, I give them, a, I give the owner, I give. Uh, sorry, too excited. Kinda got choked up right there. Too excited? Oh uh, no, no, I just had a hiccup. Um, <laughs> I give so far. If I was to grade our management, honestly, I'd give them a C. I can't give them a B or an A. Because we're still waiting on the results from like guys like Deuce McBride to see how they pan out. They've been turning up, man. No, they have, they have. But so far, you know, he's done good with the draft and like ha- and fifty fifty with the free agents. So that's why I give him a C. He could raise it to a B plus with this offseason, depending on what he do. But let's see what happens. Let's definitely see what happens, man. Um, Perhaps Randall gets traded. Who knows? I wonder where. I wonder who we will get. Uh, the Donovan Mitchell rumors are around, but how about Jeremy Grant? Would you think he's still on the table? Uh, for us, Detroit would definitely take Julius Randle. I don't know about Jeremy. Grant. I mean, I did want him at the deadline, but the fact that we ended up with Cam Reddish would that would take a lot of minutes from him when he gets back. So, nah, I'm kind of iffy about Jeremy Grant at the moment, and, it's, and it has nothing to do with him. He's I heard, good. Jeremy actually, Grant is good. He is, he's very good. I actually heard that they are looking to fill his spot with a center position. Uh-oh. Because we still haven't signed Mitch. Uh-oh. Sign and trade for Jeremy Grant? I hope not. Well, he wouldn't be the center. We we would need a center. Because uh, what it's looking like, it doesn't look like they're signing Mitch, bro. I don't know, man. It doesn't look like it, bro. If they if they would have signed it, they would have signed it already. Nah, well, they still have time. Maybe they just, like, I, I'm still not going to say he's gone. A lot of people saying he's gone. I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon until I see a headline saying he's gone. So there's still time for him to resign. I guess they got to, I guess, for what I read, like I said, they're pretty much caught in a rock at a hard place between a couple of million. And I think if that's the case, the Knicks should just give him the couple of million. I mean, he earned it. He's definitely earned it. I mean, he's he he is actually. Actually, we'll get to him later. Um, let's get into these games, bro. Yeah, let's do that. We said we said on Julius Randle, right? Uh, three and one this week. Three and one, and how many of them we did not have Julius Randle? We didn't have Julius Randle for the Hawks, the Hornets, and that was it. And that was it. He came back. He came back in the Pistons. No, no, wait, wait. Did he play against the Heat? I'm not sure. Let no, he check. did not play against the Heat. So yeah, he came back against the Pistons. Then okay, that's the one we almost lost. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about these games. The man. trend is there, my boy. So, what you want to start off with first? You want to start off with the Hawk game, your favorite game of the week? Yeah, might as well because that was a shaky one to me. Let's get the Wombs. I did it. Yeah, first of all, Trey Young killed us. Um, final score, Hawks 117, Knicks 111. Listen, at the end of the game, I genuinely thought he should have kept McBride in because Alec Burks was just getting fucking... S- you have a two, Thibodeau, you have a two slash three guard guarding a one and not just any one. You're guarding Trey Young. Yeah, one that likes to show off in our house. He dropped Taj Gibson. He dropped the goats. I wanted to fight him for that. That hurt. I wanted to fight him for that. That hurt, bro. And he dropped 45. He had 45 and 8 assists, I believe. Fuck Uh, you, Trey Young. Fuck Trey Young. Fuck Trey Young. I didn't hear enough of that. Huh? I didn't hear enough of that that night. Oh, no? Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, he fucking killed us. He was doing a lot of bowing. Hey, man, oh, Bogdanovic killed us. Bogdanovic dropped 32. But let's talk about how RJ had to put the Knicks in the fucking backpack. Yeah, man. He had 30 points, 13 boards, 3 assists, 2 steals. Wow, what a game, RJ. Put him in the fucking backpack, and we almost won. Alec Burks going up for 21. Evan Fournier, my boy that we should keep. I kind of feel sorry for Burks, man, because... He's turning up, but this, he's raising his trade value right now. He's going stupid. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's the reason I feel sorry for him. I don't. And I I'll do, t- but I don't. No, no, I'm going to tell you why. It's because, like, we know what he brings to the table. Him running the point kind of soured some of our fan base towards him. Because him running the point, like you said, he's out of position. So they, he's had... Remember, 
I gave him that nickname, Mr. Dependable. Yes. And I gave him that for a reason, because last season he was dependable as hell. And he is coming back. Yeah, he's Mr. Dependable's Mr. back. He's coming back. But like you but, said, it's because he's no longer a one. Yeah, when he went, when he switched to the one, I don't exactly remember when that started. I know it started this year. I just don't remember what game. I think it probably started after Rose got hurt. Okay, you're right. Okay, you're right. Probably. After that, he lost a little luster. Like, he wasn't as dependable. Because, like you said, he was playing out of position, guarding doing point guards. Like, you can't... Most twos, unless you're a great defender, which isn't Burks. I'm not saying he's a terrible defender, but he's not a great defender. Are not going to be able to guard a point guard, especially one the caliber of Trey Young. Yeah. You know what I he mean? He pulled the same mistake in the playoffs with Frank. You put a guy in who hasn't played the entire game. Yeah, um... But the reason I feel sorry for him was because, bro, he lost a lot of luster this year with that position change. And he's starting to get it back, which because, is sweet. Which is sweet. And it's because of these guys, McBride and Quickly. Yeah, they're, Qu- they're, they're showing, Quickly showing some true vet, veterinarian blood. Yeah, Quickly's been showing out veterinarian. <laughs> Veteran. Veteran. <laughs> I just caught that too, bro, veterinarian. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a doctor to animals, bro. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> that was funny. But nah, Quickly's been coming on, though. Um, he had 17, five boards, and two assists in this game. And despite how shaky I said Toppin looks, he did have 10 points and seven boards. But the reason I said he was shaky is because only 10 points, bro. And John Collins, did John was Collins no, wasn't playing? No presence. Come on, Obi, you can do better than that. I love, oh, I got love for you, Obi, because you're the man. But in that game, but he shot a high, kill. he shot a high percentage. Yeah, he did, but, like, still, you should have gave me more than 10 points that game, bro, because Danilo Gallinari, and I like Gallo, no disrespect to Gallo, but, but he's not guarding Obi. You also got to take into consideration his minutes. Uh-huh. Wait, and wait, how many minutes did Obi play? Obi 23. played 23 minutes, okay. And RJ had 30 points, so he had the ball most of the time. Understood. You know what I mean? So Alec Burks had 21 because he always has the ball. He's he he is the he's the two one. Um, quickly he's gonna chuck up a lot of shots too. So honestly, the Toppin's position. See this this is the, this is the role change, right? This is how Toppin is gonna succeed. He's like the he's like the janitor. Okay. He, he's the cleanup. He's the cleanup crew. Everybody's gonna go to go to war. Barrett, all these guys, and Toppin's gonna be that perfect support player because when Randall was here. He was the juggernaut. He was the guy. He was you. Had, the run the offense is gonna run through him, and all that. Okay. You know, so this is kind of what you want from Obi. Now, would you want more? Of course. I just wanted more aggressiveness this game, considering Collins was out. Because, like I said, I'm not. I'm not disrespecting Gallo because I like Danilo Gallinari, former Nick, um, decent player. Good and he shooter. was a minus ten. That's what I'm saying. He should have. I'm not saying he should have killed Gallo. But he should have had more than 10. And he should have took more than 7 shots. Because he was 5 of 7. Good percentage. Don't get it twisted. 5 of 7 is great. But considering who was guarding him, he should have had more looks. Well, I kind of feel like... And it's no disrespect to RJ because he had a good game. Quickly had a good game. What killed us was we couldn't stop Trey Young. But at the same time, if we would have evolved OB more, it's possible we could have won this game. If we would have took advantage of that little... um. I won't call it a mismatch, but compared to John Collins guarding him, yeah, he should have had more points. We shot, but that's just my opinion. We shot fourteen of twenty-six from the free throw line. Man, that's another reason we lost. Fifty-three percent. That's terrible. The Hawks shot eighty-two. Terrible. Where's where's the a lot of damage? Oh, it's a lot of damage. Where is it? Not that's a, crazy. It's not enough damage. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's nuts, man. Um, well, honestly, we had that game. We were up like what, twelve? We blew a lead this game too. Biggest lead was twelve. Yep. Oh my god, dude! Some of us blowing these. But it was in the second quarter. I knew. I knew that was gonna happen. It was in the second quarter. It was too early. But we could have won this game for sure, man. We should have been four zero. There's a lot of games this season we could have won. We should be a playoff team. Ooh, yeah. That's another thing we didn't do. We didn't do the polls. Oh, shit. Don't worry, but we'll get to that. We didn't do the polls. Yeah, Nick's Anonymous. Instagram, follow it now. Do the polls. We got some polls up. 
Um, we're going to talk about it after the games. That's a fact. We're going to get there. Stay tuned. All right, moving on to the Hornets. The Hornets. We actually dominated. If I remember correctly, did we leave the whole game? Um, I would say for the most part. I think in the beginning was some lead changes. Uh, final score, 121-106, Knicks. Um, Very, um... Now, this game... I didn't think we were going to dominate like this. Though. I didn't either. Now, this game... This is what this is the Obi Toppin I wanted to see. This is what I want to see from Obi Toppin more. 18 points, 11 boards. The six assist, I don't expect that from you that much, but that was a plus, so you do get credit for that, Obi. Yes, sir. You get the claps, man. And he had a steal and a block. For a guy that's not that good of a defender. Credit. Eight of eleven. Let's go, man. Let's go, Obi. All right. Jericho Sims with ten points. Yeah. Going five for five. He's looking very more he's looking very aggressive. He's actually looking a bit a little bit more comfortable. Yo, bro, that guy can't be moved. And he's very fast. He's a brick wall, that guy. Like his lateral quickness is crazy. I know. I, I, like he's another gu- he's another center that could guard the perimeter. Maybe not as good as Robinson, but, but he can. He can. He can make those switches. I like I, I see that as well. I like Jericho Sims and what he could potentially bring to the table. RJ Barrett with that, an astonishing 30. another 30 point game. Ten of nineteen. We had one. three of seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven guys in double figures. That's pretty impressive. Dependable. 17 points. Fournier had 12. Even My Ta- boy Fournier. Even Taj got in the action. He had 12 points, five boards. An Fournier. assist, a steal, and a- wow. That's a nice stat line for Taj Gibson. La France. Listen, the Frenchman needs to stay. We got the right Frenchman. He didn't shoot too good in this game, though. No, he Four didn't. But listen, Evan Fournier is a solid piece. He's he good. is. He is. He, I, can, wa- I can look past his faults. He's one of those players I can look past his faults. Because when it, he'll be there. You know what I mean? He'll be there. When, when you really, really need him, he'll be there. I would rather him shoot. You know what I mean? We could probably get somebody better. But for the price and for what, you know... He's good, man. He's good. At least for like until his con- how long we signed him for? Three, four years? Uh, his, I think two years aren't guaranteed. So technically, two years. Two years. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I'll keep four years. Technically, for two years. I'll keep four years for two years. Hell yeah. Especially for what we got him for. You shitting me? Facts. Not for nothing. Um, we shot fifty-one percent from the field, forty-four percent from three, and we actually hit our free throws. Fifteen of seventeen, eighty-eight percent. And this is just something, you know, this is this is an example of what happens when we come together. Now, knowledge. Julius Randle was not playing this game. Again. Again, and things I hate to say Cause, it, man, because I like I personally like Randle. I like him as a person and as a ball player sometimes. Cause sometimes just like y'all, he pisses me off. But, the, just, but, it, demeanor, but, but shit man. flows. His demeanor. It's his attitude, man. It's the demeanor. It's, it's just, not It's not only that. It's There's no stoppage when he's not there. It's moving. It's like a, it's like a river. Yeah, it's, it's like Bruce Lee. Be water. Be water. Randall's concrete. Hell, I'll even, hey, I'll even throw this out there. Because what makes the Golden State Warriors great is their ball movement. We kind of look kind of Golden State-esque in, against Charlotte. That's a bold statement. I'll take it. I mean, bro, seven players in double figures. The ball must be moving. And let's not let's let's give big props to quickly, man. Big props, big props. He's been doing good running the point. He's been doing great. 10, 5, and 7 in this game. Five boards, seven assists. Let me tell you, his passing, that that game winner for the Chicago Bulls, that pass that he gave Burks. Ooh, gotta hold that for next week. Oh, shit. You're so right. <laughs> Road Charlotte. You're right. Where's, <laughs> my, where's my birthday shout out? That's a fact. Oh, yeah. Shout out to LJ. Yeah. The boy is. We'll, we'll talk about what happened on his birthday next show because that covers this week. Yes, we need content. Yeah. But to first, yeah, shout out. Happy birthday to me. You already know. Yeah. Your boy turned 22. Deuce, deuce. Deuce, deuce. Your team just took a deuce. No, our team just took a deuce on you. Quick deuce. As a matter deuce. of fact. Quick Deuce combined for 19 points in this game. Ooh, it's a quick Deuce. Deuce McBride right. had nine points in 10 minutes. That's a That's quick pretty Deuce impressive. Right. Did he have a steal? Uh, he did not. He was mostly offense this game, but he did. Um, was he plus or minus? Um, zero. Ooh, so yeah. he was basically even. Um, but he did big things in that game, like that you don't see in the in the stat sheet. He blocked passing lanes, got on double teams. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things that, bro. I see what. I see what 
I don't know what Tibbs sees. In, this might not make sense. I don't know what Tibbs sees, but I do. And what I mean by I don't know what he sees, but I do is because, like, why would you draft this kid and not give him minutes? I see why he wanted this kid. He does things on defense you do not see on the stat sheet. Like, especially position. Like, bro, small things like, all right. For example, just as an example. Somebody sees an open man. With Deuce on the court, he'll see that open man. But he won't make the pass because before he makes the pass, Deuce will be there waiting for the pass. He does small things like that. Like, he'll get to he'll get to an open man faster than most from what I see. Feline quickness. Yes. If... You could have one-on-one defense, but if you're not a good defender off the ball, I won't say you're nothing, but you're not as good as a defender as advertised. And Deuce McBride is all those things. I see it. He's as it, his all-around his, defense. His offense is what scares me a little bit, at least right now. I think that I think that's only because he hasn't played much. He'll get his rhythm. Because defense, you don't really need a rhythm. Defense, you know, you come in, all right, I'm stopping him. That's it. You know, some people got that, some don't. Deuce has that. I I mean, yeah, man. I would rather, I would much rather a player with um, defense than offense, to be honest. Because you can't, they say you can't teach defense. And I believe that. You, you got to really enjoy playing defense to be a great defender. Because anybody can really play defense. It's just... effort, bro. It's effort. Because like I said, remember what I said a few episodes ago? Um, to bring to get off Deuce, I'll bring quickly into the conversation. He didn't do too good this year. He had off games. What saves quickly from criticism? Effort on defense, and he's not even that good of a defender. But you see him going at it every night. He hustles, diving for loose balls. Yeah, bro. That nice steal with the Miami Heat. That was a great steal. Oh, all right. So I guess we're getting into the Heat game then. Um, yeah, I mean, is there really much? Yeah, there's not really much to say about the Charlotte game. Like, we killed them that game. We, we killed them. We, I, I'm surprised we did, too, because I was with, expecting with the, to see the LaMelo Ball show. Because we seem to have point problems with point guards. Even though he did drop 32, 9 boards, and 5 assists. Shout out to LaMelo. Yes, sir. But we won the game, and that's what's important. We gave them the one-two punch combo, baby. Took a quick deuce on your team. Yes, sir. But again, final score, Knicks 121, Charlotte 106. Uh, Up next. Oh, the greatest game of the week, in my opinion. Yeah, that was beautiful. Honestly, it's a tie. Actually, no, no. This is. This is I'm the sorry. One. This no, is, this is I, the one. I keep going to the Bulls game. I don't know why. This is the one. This is the, uh, yes. Knicks 111, Heat 103. We were down by 17 I'm gonna be completely in the second quarter, and I don't know what happened, but after we made the comeback, we had control the whole game. I have no idea what you're about to say, but I'm dying to hear it. Go ahead. I've been... <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I, me and my dad, were watching the game. I thought it was over, bro. Once we got down 17, I thought it was over. I was fall- I fell asleep, and I, I kept waking up gradually. And the score kind of looked a little bit lower. I kind of heard my dad going crazy a little bit. But I was just knocked out. I was tired. We were down 15. I was like, yeah, this is, this is Checked clip. out. Jimmy Butler was laughing. Bam Adebayo was having a great time. Tyler Hero was, out. Tyler out. Hill was throwing gang signs on the sideline. I don't know what Tyler Hero yeah, was Yeah, I thought jacking. it was over. I thought it was over then, too. That's what I thought. Once I saw the gang signs, I thought it was a wrap. You know what I mean? Yeah, this thing is going gang signs in the fucking sideline. I don't know what the fuck that was about. And I woke up. To Quentin Grimes hitting the game tying three, he hit some big shots that game, bro. Bro, all nine of his points were in that clutch. Was in yes. that was in that run. Quentin Grimes was big money. Nine points, bro. Nine. The best nine points in that game. Yes, bro. I woke up to that game tying three. I was like, what the fuck? Would you call? I I I, I put this comparison in my head about Grimes, and you can tell me if I'm bugging or not. Feel free to agree or disagree. But do you think Quentin Grimes is a poor man's Clay Thompson? Yes. Okay, I thought I was the only one. Bro, he's like a pistol. He's, I thought I was the only one. He's a pistol, bro. He's just ready. He's just ready to shoot. No hesitation. He's catch, release. Like what I love is the confidence. Yeah, he's ready, bro. Like he's taking that shot. I love that confidence, bro. Yeah, you know how co- many balls you gotta you gotta have to be on a veteran floor, and you're the rookie, and you're gonna take a contested three-point line that's not even at the three-point line you were like five feet behind it a clutch contested three-pointer at that you know what i mean to tie the game 
That takes balls. And then to make it. He played big. Deuce McBride had um five big points too. Matter of fact, his five points changed the momentum. Because remember, we were still... Um, I think we were losing the lead. The Heat were coming back. Deuce McBride dropped the five. Um, then Quentin Grimes did his thing. You already know. And shout out, big shout out to fucking Emmanuel quickly. Yeah, he was the man that game, bro. Like, unfortunately, was- I was I was slumped for his for his heroic comeback efforts. But bro, that was beautiful watching. From him. what my dad had told me, he was like, quickly was Captain America. And he put the Avenger on his on his shield, and he fucking took him to the promised land. He uh, put he put him in a position to succeed. He um, kept him in it pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I could agree with that comparison. I'll not the one I would have made, but I'll take it. I, I'll take it. I'm fine with that. Listen, man, that was great, bro. Like, cause especially considering the Miami Heat have owned us for like the past what four or five years. For us to take this game from them in this fashion, especially after they little episode they had, was it the, the yes. day before? Yes. You know how many clipboards were thrown? Because in the um, fucking at the end of that, who was it? It was Jimmy Butler, Udonis Haslam, and um Spolstra. They had a little, a little mix up on their sideline the game before. Listen, bro, that was a quiet ass locker room after the Nick game. I bet it was. Yo, you know what I heard though. I heard the Heat are not playing well, so they could avoid Brooklyn in the first round. Ah, uh, I don't know if that's true, but why would you do that? I push. actually think I actually think the Heat could beat Brooklyn. Pussy. I think that he could beat Brooklyn. I don't think Kyrie Irving is all that. Pussy. You're being pussy. They are, if that's the case. <laughs> you just lost to the Knicks. We took a quick deuce on your team, motherfuckers. <laughs> Clap it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was again final score? What a fucking comeback! What a Cinderella story! Shout out to St. Peter's, by the way. 111 103 Knicks. Yeah, St. Peter's. The guy with the mustache is cool. Uh-huh. St. Peter's. I don't know his name, but that guy, that's a smooth player. Yeah, a very confident, fearless guy. And dude looks like a regular ass Joe. Get ready to see him on the Knicks next year. I don't know about that, but I know for a fact his performance in the NCAA's made him a couple million because he probably wouldn't have been drafted. Now he's getting drafted. He's definitely getting great drafted. Eff- great efforts by a team. Jersey City, shout out. I got to get that guy's name. I'm so sorry. I don't know his name, but he killed. And he deserves his flowers. Jersey, the whole the whole team, man. The yeah, whole team. yeah, yeah. Great. That was a great run. Shout uh, out to the coach. Yeah. Move, move Love it. that coach. They had a player that um went to my brother's high school. Went oh, yeah? Car- went to Cardinal Hayes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, my brother was hyped about that. Bunch of New Yorkers. Facts. It's just rough. See, New Yorkers. Hello. Come on, Bing Bong. Yep, yep. We, we run the world, Bing baby. Bong. Connected all over the world. Things want to be like us. It's crazy. All right, so again, final score, Knicks 111, Heat 103. Moving on to the Pistons. We win them 104-102. And we almost. And, and, hey. look, and look who comes back. Don't put it on him, bro. That's, uh, that's mean as fuck, even though it did happen, but yeah. <laughs> Look who came crawling back. He actually didn't have a bad game. With though. 20 points, 7 of 18. 7 of seven rebounds, 5 assists, 2 steals. Not too bad. 7 to 18, bro? That's below 50%. That's 42%, somewhere around there. Yeah, but when you got guys like Quickly and Burks killing, you know, it kind of helps. They each, they each scored 18. Bro, we almost lost this shit. I did, bro. I was, I was tight. so tight. I was I was more I was more mad than you. I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna lose it, bro. I thought, um, who who on the Pistons killed us that game? I was gonna lose Bagley. It. That's who killed us, Marcus Marvin Bagley. I was gonna call him Marcus Bagley for some reason. Like Marvin that. Bagley, for some reason, could not miss. I mean, yeah. could not. And don't say it's because Ju- go ahead say it. What? Who was guarding him? Yeah, man. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. You can say it. Who's guarding him? Julius Randle. I'm not going to blame him, but, you know, uh, he was there. This is if we blame Julius Randle or not. Ah, yes. I get to blame him. He was negative one. The blame's on you, Randle. I guess. It's all on you. But, yeah, yeah. You could blame him for leaving Bagley open. Bro, let me tell you something. 27 man. points for Bagley, let 7 me, boards. There was a lot of rotations. That he he doesn't rotate. 
Watch him. Really watch him I know. play defense. I know. He's not that. Bro, it's it's a well-known fact Julius Randle's not the smartest player. But it's really bad, though, bro. Like, you're letting guys just, you know, right to the rim, man. Yeah, Marvin Bagley, like, he... 27? Yeah. Not to, no disrespect to Marvin Bagley, but that's the guy the Sacramento Kings drafted over Luka. 11 of, so that should tell you something. 11 of 14? Yeah, bro. That, that dude was killer. Oh. One for two from three. Oh my god! Crazy, right? Oh my god! He was only a plus eight. Cause you fucking took this L, stupid. Oh boy. Bozo, stay in range. Kind of tight. I mean, I'm I'm happy we won though. But like, <sighs> give props. Look at R.J. Barrett going into his fucking Birkin bag again. Twenty one points. Nine boards, assist and a steal. Evan Fournier doing what Evan Fournier does, eleven points. I'm telling you, consistency is key, man. He's he, was, he is showing it. He just he was he shot thirty three percent from the field though, man. He got to be more consistent, man. That's three my problem. That's my problem. Three with Evan of ten Fournier. is crazy. I can't even lie to you. Three of ten is crazy. Three of ten is nuts. We were actually saved in this game by quickly. Quickly was the man in this game. Bro. And Alec yeah. Burks and Burks. Eight points, five rebounds, yeah, four combined, six. Him and him and quickly combined for thirty six. They were also a combined from the field. Drum roll, 10 for 21. And then look at this. Ovi Toppin, even when Randall was playing, still got 10 points. That's good. That's a good sign. In 16 minutes. He actually got 10 points in less minutes. That's great. But we got to stop playing down to our competition, man. Because, first of all, the Pistons were short two or three wings. If I remember correctly, because Hamadou Diallo didn't play, um, Jeremy Grant didn't play, so yeah, they were short two of their best players, and we almost got smacked. I mean, they did have Cade and Sadiq Bay who did good, but come on, bro, they were short wings. We should have took advantage of that. We should have blew them out. This should have been a blowout because we were blowing them out in the beginning. We let them back in like we always do. Poor rotations, missed free throws, dumb shit like that. You know, oh, you, the usual suspects for the Knicks. Did Jericho Sims play? He did. 18 minutes, two points. You see, you got see. Okay, look it. This is this is this is the downfall with with Randall leaving, right? Yes, I understand the kids are doing good, but they are still kids. With it may get worse before it gets better, and we're not that far off. You know what I mean? But bro, we're gonna we're gonna miss an anchor piece. You know what I mean? Like, even that, even bro, on a that, bad that's even, why I said we just can't trade him. Even on a bad game, he had twenty what twenty points. That's why I said we can't just trade him, bro. We have to get the best deal possible. People who are saying just to trade him, just to trade him, y'all y'all mind, man. We gotta get back return. We gotta get back capital. Okay, so boom, look it. Since we're always talking about the people talking their mouth, okay. even though we love all Nick fans equally, but sometimes we got to put some of y'all in check. Yeah. Thibodeau's interview, post-game interview. I forgot what game it was. I think it was the Miami Heat. I'm not sure. Actually, it was the Miami Heat. He was asked, what are, what like something about the young legs, something about. Oh, yeah. He's, I don't know what you're about. He said some bullshit. You don't, you don't agree with him? He said some bullshit. And the only reason I don't agree with him is because he wasn't doing that during this whole season. It would have been different if he was doing that. He's doing it now. Like, giving the young players burn. He's doing it now. But for him to say, what did he say? What was his quote? Like He, 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 he pretty much said that we these are the same young legs that we've had all season. He said, he said it's easy to talk numbers after the game pretty much. Like it's easy, it's easy to assess things when the game is done. Uh, nah, I thought you were talking about the quote where he said something along the lines of like, I forgot to paraphrase it. He said something like, "This is what happens when you give the young guys minutes they produce." He said something along those lines to paraphrase, which is which is BS. He might have said something like that, but the, the main thing was pretty much that um that whole thing with the. Him, basically, he was talking to the Nick fans, pretty much saying, like, yo, shut the fuck up and let me coach. I could agree to that to an extent. I mean, he is the coach. We're not coaches. So, to an extent, yeah, I could agree to that. Yeah, man. He was pressing. He was pressing. But the only thing I think he's full of shit about full is of it. saying that, like, this is what happens when you give the young dudes the minutes they go produce. He didn't say that exact quote. I'm just paraphrasing. Because... Quentin Grimes wouldn't have minutes unless 
this guy would have got hurt. Exactly. Like, if you was doing this to the begin it, then yeah, I'd be feeling you on that. But I'm not feeling you on this right now. And that's not to say I don't like Timbido. I like Timbido, but he kind of full of shit for that one. That's a fact. But, um, you know, he said it. It is what it is. We're currently on a nice little winning streak. Uh, mathematically, we're still not out of it, even though, like, at this point, I don't think there's any point to being in it. I agree. But, um, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is, for now, I'm gonna enjoy the ride. I mean, hey, man, we're playing great ball. This, I mean, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with carrying positive momentum into the following season. You know, I mean, it could only get better. Especially if we make the and right with additions. all this with all these Julius Randle talks, you know, it, we could be looking at a whole nother yeah, a whole nother whole different team. Facts. That's what everybody wants. Yeah, man. So okay, so let's get into these polls because we forgot the polls in the beginning. We even said the outline of the episode a couple of times, and you know, nah, that's cool. Let's do this. Shit happens, right? Okay, so on the poll, I put that you can find on Nick's anonymous Instagram. Uh, the story says the New York Knicks are currently on a four game winning streak. What are the odds of the team of, of them making the play in? And would you guys even want the Knicks to go into the play in? So the three options were very possible, impossible, and rather not see them in the play in. 27% said it was very possible. 33% it's impossible. And 40% said rather not see them in the play in. Thoughts? Um, I'd rather not see them in the play There's no point. Like, I don't want to make the playoffs to lose in the first round again. You know what I mean? Like, that's not progress to me. Um, am I mad we're not in the playoffs? Sure, every Knicks fan is mad. We expect it to progress. But at this point now, why do that? Like, we know, we know where, what, we know the direction we have to go. We either have to go young or we need to make a big trade or a little bit of both. And a point guard. I would assume that's the draft of the big trade. <laughs> and but, the point um, guard. yeah, I don't, it's, I see no point to it. Just to lose. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather, I'd rather us get a draft pick and better ourselves and put ourselves in a better position for next season than to get like a false little run that leads to nothing that, that makes no sense to and then leads to more hope and then we get to get let down again exactly and then, and then we get more criticism for it exactly so i think it's i think it's we should just play hard fight and honestly if we make the play in it was completely by accident <laughs> exactly like what well, we'll, like why i would say it's completely Gun by for accident. that pick because if we get the pick especially if we get into the lottery we're gonna end up with a good, um, a very decent player coming out of this draft, or we trade the pick. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We got options. So I'm gonna have to agree with the majority on this one as well. I would rather not see them in the play-in. Um, I think it's uh, one of those pointless things. I don't think we'll be making a championship run. Doesn't mean I think we are trash, because if we actually look at RJ's numbers throughout the week for a second. I have a post right here. Do 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 do. RJ's last few games. These are his points: 28 points, 21 points, 18 points, 30 points, 30 points, 24 points, 18 points, 31 points. That is one, two, three, 30-point games. One, two, three, 20-point, over 20-point games, and only two 18-point games. And those eight, those eighteen point games happen to be bad days. That's crazy. Eighteen points is a bad game for RJ. Oh yeah, he's taking the step up. And to add on to that, Mitchell Robinson on RJ Barrett going ham. He says, and I quote, "Oh, that boy is balling right now." Well, yeah. And I'm gonna have to agree. That yeah. boy is bugging out. That's actually an understatement. He's killing. Maple so, so Mamba. That means- if this year, if 18 points a game, I mean, not 18 points a game, excuse me. If 18 points is a bad game for RJ this year, that means next year 20 is going to be a bad game. I want that next year. Yo, RJ, man, you just keep evolving, man. I just got to give you the claps for that one, bro. You're really bugging out lately, man. 
dead ass. But let's get into this second poll. The second poll we have here is a mock trade created by Steven. And then I modified it because I forgot what the one that he told me. It'd be like that. I'm sorry, Steven. This shit happens. <laughs> so uh, the Knicks received Donovan Mitchell uh-huh. for two future first round picks. Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly. I said, how are you feeling about this one, New York? 19% absolutely, 81% said absolutely not. I'm with the 81%. I'm not trading Obi and Quickly for him. I mean, first of all, I don't know if the salaries work for that trade. I'm, I assume you're going to need more people for that because Donovan Mitchell makes so much money. But I'm not trading both of those guys. It's one or the other. Wow, this poll actually got a lot of... Got a lot of votes? Yeah. Wow, a lot of people really weren't down for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why would you? You can't give up both young pieces, bro. I mean, you're going to end up giving up young pieces, but you can't. We're in control. They're not. Remember, if Donovan Mitchell gets traded, it's most likely because he asked. So, I mean, the Jazz, I'm not, let, me not say the, let me not say the Jazz have no control. Because they're going to decide who, who he gets traded to. They're going to take the best deal possible. And Julius Randle was definitely not that deal. But the Knicks have some pieces. So it's possible we can take control, depending on how Leon Rose plays his cards. But not for the picks I have laid out here. I, it would depend on the picks. Like, um, okay, hypothetically speaking, we make a Donovan Mitchell trade this year. Let's say draft day. You trade all our picks this year and a pick next year? Yeah, two future first rounds. So this, so our pick this year, maybe the Dallas pick next year. Matter of fact, you so know what so I'm you would just change the players because my I have two future first round picks, OB and quickly. I'm not trading both of them. I'm trading one or the other. I would trade quickly. One of them, a vet or two, and draft picks. Yeah, I would trade quickly because we're getting rid of Randall, so we're gonna need Toppin. That's true. That's very true. And plus, quickly, I mean Donovan would just fill quickly's role. Times two or four. No disrespect to quickly. We love you, but you not know. at all, man. But like, we gotta. Shit happens. Yeah. We gotta make a move for the greater good. It is what it is. Shout out to Nick's Anonymous. Uh, shout out to Nick's Anonymous family for being so active on the on the Instagram. Um, last post, I uh, asked, are you guys enjoying the content? Guess how many people said yes? All right, gets the percentage. 90? 100%. 100%. I'm just being modest. So 100 is cool. So you guys, I we and we love the fact that you guys are enjoying the content because that's why we're here, man. We're entertaining. And then, to top it off, off we have a nice little meme here with um, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. And it says, Nick's with a 20-point lead. <laughs> that was funny. And it has it on that was Chris. Funny. It has it on Chris Rock's face as he's getting slapped. And then obviously the slappy William uh William Smith, right? Smith Williams is slapping Chris Rock as you know and it has Julius Randle written on Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then again, you know, Chris Rock took that as took that slap like a champ. He took that slap. He took that slap better than Julius Randle takes slander from the garden. Let's be real. And I like Randle, but that's just the truth. Sorry, Randle. I'm not sorry. Oh, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. If you were I'm sorry, not, wouldn't have said it. I'm not sorry at all. I like I said. I like Randle as a man. I like Randle as a basketball player. It looks like he's a good father, a good husband, and all that. But pack your bags, my boy. I I won't even go that far. But so, are you down on shipping this man? I it, like I said, it depends for who we get. It depends. But I, the idea of shipping this man, period, just in general. Yes. Again, I'm fifty fifty. I would have to see the trade first. But do Cause, you believe? Cause you know he why? Needs to leave. Check it out. I'm gonna tell you something about Julius Randle. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something about Let Julius me tell Randle, you bro. <laughs> I get the feeling. You know what video I was talking about? Huh? You know what video I was talking about? Nah. Oh, I gotta show you. I'll show you after. All right. Bro, here's the thing about Julius Randle. He's a player that everybody's thirst to get rid of. And here's what my thinking's gonna be. 
We're gonna get rid of him. We're gonna ship him to a team. We're gonna kill for that team. And we're gonna get the same old Nick narrative. Oh, everybody that leaves the Knicks plays better everywhere else. But y'all the ones we wanted to trade it. Watch that happen. I put money on that. Hell, the possibility, bro. If we trade him to the right team, like to a contender, and he wins a championship before us, then what? Oh, you see, the Knicks trade away players, and then they go somewhere else, and then they win championships. So, what's your argument? I'm telling you. You know what I mean? Watch. So, like, what's like, yeah, like, what is your what is your argument, people? Watch, go, go that's eat, gonna go happen, bro. That could possibly happen. That's why I'm kind of 50-50 on trading him. He strikes me as that guy. Because we're thirst to get rid of him. Oh, D. Oh, D. And if that happens, bro. Come on, Nick fans. Y'all got no legs to stand on. You got no one else to blame but yourselves. And that's what I said about Dolan earlier. Yep. He gives the fans what they want, whether we choose to see that or not. So if this happens, and this is just me thinking down the road, if this happens, y'all got to take a look at yourselves for once. Time to look inner, get some peace, get some, uh, meditate, do something mental, you know what I mean? Spiritual health. Take it seriously. I approve this message. Back. So, um, yeah, I think that concludes today's episode, man. What a great episode, honestly. Yeah, pretty cool. It was a very positive one in aside, terms of winning. Aside from the whole slapping thing, even though that was funny, I don't that care. Was, I don't that care was, that wasn't even negative either. It's not. I wouldn't even call that negative because that nothing to do with us. I mean, it was still a negative moment because it didn't make him look good, bro. It didn't make anybody look good except for Chris Rock, and he's the one who got slapped. Listen, man, we're never gonna get into that. That's funny, bro. Yeah, you're right. Let's not get into it. We gotta we, wrap the show we, up. We're not Thank you for listening, Nick Anonymous. Um. If, you know, maybe we'll one day do a live video talking shit about it. Just for fun. Yeah, why not, man? We love you and guys. We'll tie, and we'll tie it to the Knicks so far. So what does Chris Rock slapping Will Smith have to do with the Knicks? Yeah, we'll tie it in. We'll figure out a way. It'll be, <laughs> it'll be the reason why Julius Randle got traded. As I said, we'll find a way. <laughs> if there's a will, there's a way. Shout Especially out. in today's America. That's a fact, man. Shout out to Knicks Anonymous family. We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. 63 episodes is mind blowing mind blowing if you're on youtube do not forget to lo- ooh, uh, like comment subscribe we love the comments we love talking with you guys um that's no- president futures coming soon another episode yes and we will be getting back on reg- uh, regular regularly regularly scheduled programming monday 7 a.m episodes will drop we've been slipping lately it's all right though life we're happens all- y'all yeah, 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 gotta bear with us we're only human well, I'm only you. You know what I mean? I bet. So, um, three and one, great week. Knicks rock, no matter what. I rock with my Knicks. Damn right. Up, down, sideways, left, right. You already know how that goes. But that's mm-hmm. that's what we, that's what being a true fan is all about. You can hate them, you can spit on them, you can despise them. But we'll always be here. Yes, sir. Let's go, Knicks. Whoop whoop. <laughs>